due to the fact that we're still in a quarantine and I've been told that we need to stay social yet avoid people. So what I did is hire a robot and he will do the guest intro today. Oh yeah, babies, here's your captain speaking. We're gonna dip down and slide on into this next one of springless of intergalactic stardust along the way. Thank you, Captain. Anytime, baby. All right, let's create some wobbly bobbly dribbly squiggly text. And to do that, we obviously need text. So I will click on the type tool here, that T, and let's center this thing here. And I'm going to pick a font that is Invasion 2028. You can get this from defont.com. This is a good text because uh, it has an even distribution of points and that's because it has uh, just straight lines and no curves. If I look at it here with the uh, this arrow tool here, I could see that. And uh, this just works best for this effect, at least for now, maybe after the beta um, text will be a little bit, have a little bit better point distribution or uh, maybe I'll figure out a better way to do this. But for now, I just want to add some divisions. So I'll go to deformers and add divisions and I'll click this little arrow and double click on that division so I see it here. I'm gonna set this down to three. I might raise it up later. And um, now if I select, you'll see we have more points as what we want. So I'll go back to this tool and we've got points. So let's do something with it. And I'll alt double click on this text and in the deformers, click the plus sign again. Now I'm gonna add noise and we've got some distortion. It's a little bit intense. I'm gonna double click on it here this time because now we're gonna have more things in this deformers area and it might just be easier to click it down here. Actually, let's all double click it to simplify our view. And uh, let's, let's bring our negative up a bit and uh, just get a more slight distortion and if I play this, well, before I do, let's set our FPS to 60 and see if we could get our computer to catch fire when we render. And uh, let's give ourselves, let's say 100 frames. And if we play this, we'll see it's going fairly slow and it's also not looping. So let's fix that now. Let's turn looping on and our loop length will be the length of our playback which is 100 frames and uh, let's say we want this four or five times faster and let's give this a look all right so th this is this is good we've got it going and um now we've just got a little bit of an issue and you might like this but i don't want this jagged edge so I'm going to alt double click on the text and I'm going to add one more thing in this deformer section. That's going to be a bevel and that rounds our corners. Now we could uh, go back to our add divisions and let's just see, uh, let's bring it up to maybe five was good. Let's see if we could go even further. Just note that I think this will slow down your performance. So if I go to eight, and that looks okay. And if I go now to like 22, um, you know, that, that might be more detail than what we need. So I think probably eight will be enough. And I got a, I got a good amount of distortion here. It's not slowing down too much. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And, um, what I'm going to do now is, uh, I'll double click type and at least for now, I'm going to turn the fill off and I'm going to turn the stroke on and I'm going to make the stroke darker. So it's black and uh, I'll call this part good for now. We might come back into some of these settings here, but for now I'll collapse that. And uh, what I'll do is make an outline. So select my type, click on my outline button, outline will drop it to the bottom and um we could we could look at the offset a little bit and the width we could adjust that and um 
I'm just going to make this color that stands out from our um, our black stroke. Maybe that stands out a little too much. Let's tone this down. Actually, let's let's go with um, like a grayish blue. I think that'll be okay. And uh, and of course, I could come back and change any of these things later. I could even um, add a stroke to this outline. You got to be careful with that because you're going to get these pointy edges. But if I go to the uh, join style, change that to rounded. Now we're going to get some kind of in between edges, but uh, might might not be too bad. And if I adjust the width, I can uh, kind of turn that down a little bit. And I think I'm going to make a similar color. So something in the blue range. So just, just something to give a little bit of extra texture in there. And um, also I'm seeing like some pointy edges here that I probably want to get rid of. So I'm going to bring down the miter. Actually, that, that might not be the way to go. Um, let's go into, we're at the stroke. Let's go into the shape here because we have... Um, Another join style here. Let's set that to round. Okay, that was it. So this works now. I think it. I think it's good. Works for me at least. And uh, now I'm gonna duplicate this outline. So we'll select the outline. We'll hit our duplicate button, and uh, we'll set this from grid to point. And now they're all gonna be kind of on top of each other. Uh, we can also look at the blend modes in our duplicator and let's just start with um, silhouette uh, modulate looks pretty good i might end up sticking with that modulate and uh, yeah i feel like that's the best let's go with that uh, we could if we want we can also drop the opacity if we want to see through this a little bit we can go to our outline i don't know if the blend mode is going to do much here let's just see yeah, it looks like it will do something. We could do the modulate again, but we might find... I, I like that hard light. I'll probably stick with that hard light. Yeah, let's stick with that. Uh, hard light. If we want, we could drop the opacity of this one a little bit. And... Um, and everything I do here, I would definitely, after I finish adding all the effects that I want, I would definitely come back, start to adjust settings, colors, um, basically everything. But for now, uh, I'm going to continue on. So we got a duplicator, but like we talked about, they're all, let's alt click on that, they're all right on top of each other. So even as I increase the uh, count here, you're going to see they just kind of uh, get heavier and thicker. Uh, but not spreading out. So let's spread it out by alt, double clicking on outline and we want our, so the offset is where it gets pushed out. But it's pushing out all at once. If we don't want that, we can right click on offset and go to add a behavior stagger. We could also do like a noise or a random, but let's do a stagger and uh, now we've got our stagger here. I'll double click on it. Let's increase our maximum. We could decrease our minimum. And now uh, you can see we're starting to get some, some wiggly text. You also see that it's getting slowed down. So I'll pause the recording. All right, so this is what we end up with. And you know, it, it's all right. It definitely could use some work in it. For some reason, if I mouse over the screen, it slows down the playback. Uh, so that's kind of the effect. If I zoom out, though, uh, let's see one one issue that arises that we could fix. And um, I'll just render this out. Okay, so one issue with the default settings on the noise is um, I'm just going to have to slow this playback down by mousing over here. You'll see that the distortion is more at the edges than it is in the center. And uh, if you want that effect, then you're good. But I'm going to go back into uh, the type where I have this noise here and double click on it. I'm going to set this to use normals and that's going to change things a little bit. But uh, let's see, can we set this to something that we like? I 
think that'll work. So now I'll render this. And you can see there is a more even distribution here. And, and uh, I like that look better. Okay, so that that's that's the majority of effect. After that, it's just a lot of tweaking and, and making subtle changes, uh, taking a look at, uh, let's go in here and uh, let's, let's go into the duplicator and add some noise to it. I'll, I'll double click on it and go to deformers and noise here and weight. Hopefully this doesn't crash. Okay, so I'm really, I'm kind of slowing down my computer. So I gotta be, be careful about how much, how far I go here. I will uh, try and speed things up by going into my add divisions let's go back down to three maybe even two or one and uh, hopefully this speeds things you can see we got less detail but you know maybe that's all right and uh, so i'll go to the noise on the duplicator and i need to uh, tone this down a bit and um, i will maybe i'll turn up the frequency I've got these both the same numbers. They're actually not going to do anything like that. Uh, turning up the frequency and I'm also going to, well, let's just see what this looks like before I make more changes. And we're starting to get some, some decent wiggly, squiggly, dribbly looks there. And um, I also could uh, turn on looping for this noise and set it to use normals. And now maybe I need to crank it up a bit. And um, just one thing I've noticed, I'm not sure um, why this is, but when I add the noise here, even though I have used normals, uh, we're getting a, like a regular amount of noise here. These last couple letters are starting to get uh, much wider, uh, bigger, or I should, maybe I should say lower frequency. And uh, not sure why that is, but it's just something I've been running into with this effect. And um, yeah, so some other things you could do are we could we could leave it as is and it's probably good or we could start adding stuff to the, to the noise position to, you can see we could start to have it move in a certain direction. And if I right click and I go to add behavior frame for the Y, and uh, render this out, we should see it start to kind of move in a direction, either downwards or upwards. So maybe it kind of looks like it's moving downwards, but I think we could make that more extreme. So I'll go in here and I'll double click on this. And uh, so we got our strength, our value. Let's, that might be too much. So let's go, uh, Let's say we want this seven times faster and we'll see how that looks. And now we can see it's moving a lot faster on the uh, Y position, but I don't, I don't think I, I don't really like how it looks now. So let's go to the, the noise on the duplicator. I'll, uh, I thought I all double clicked there. I did. Okay. So I'm going to turn off use normals because now this actually looks better this way. Uh, what else can we do? I'm going to go back to the top. That first noise I added on the base text. I'm going to click on that. And um, let's take a look at this, this cellular noise. This gives you more of a kind of a, a stop motion type um, popping feel. I might need to, might need to raise, it, raise it up a bit so we get more distortion just so it's more apparent what it's doing and we'll take a render here. All right, and now you can see we got our original, this black outline, that text has that kind of poppy look to it. And that's what you, what you get with the cellular, cellular noise. And I, I think that's, that's really interesting. I, I like the way that that looks. And um, yeah, so there's um, a thousand other things you could do. Uh, I could come back to the type layer if, if we want to change the, the look a little bit and go to the fill, turn the fill back on. Uh, let's give it I don't know, just a, a contrasty, 
color, maybe something like that. And uh, we can go into the, uh, well, we could drop the opacity. We could also go in and uh, see if the blend modes do anything interesting for us. I'll just click on one and use the down arrow key. Yeah, so you get some interesting um, different looks with that. And then it could come back in. Maybe, maybe I should have left the opacity up while I was making these adjustments. So I get a better feel for what it would be doing. I think maybe sticking with the something in the blue colors would probably be a good idea. And then adjusting like the darkness or the, the lightness of it. All right, so yeah, I could go on forever, but um, this is a good place to stop. I'd say that the things to remember are you could add noise, you could add noise within your noise. Like if I wanted to add some noise or some randomness in the minimum or maximum or, uh, all right, just just for the heck of it, let, let's go in the noise position and add a behavior. Let's add some noise in the we did something on the Y already. Let's try this one. Add behavior noise on the X. And I'll click on that. I mean, double click on, click on the arrow, that little yellow arrow and double click on the name. So we're in the uh, noise that we just added. And um, uh, I don't know if how interesting or how good this is going to look, but let's just see what happens if we, this will be the last render, I swear. Yeah, so that didn't do too much to uh, change the overall look, it just added an extra level of distortion and complexity to the distortion. And uh, so those are just the tip of the iceberg for creating this kind of squiggly text effect.